Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll get a look at the BQ H2 V2S Revo, a direct drive extruder from BQ with E3D's Revo built in. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the BQ H2 V2S direct drive extruder with the E3D Revo built in. Big thanks to E3D for sending this over free of charge so I can show it to you. Now, I've got a video about the original BQ H2 direct drive extruder, and I've also done one about the E3D Revo micro hot end. And the BQ H2 V2S with the E3D Revo brings these two products together into a single package. So what the H2 V2S Revo gets you is a super compact direct drive extruder with all the benefits of the original H2. Lightweight, dual filament drive gears to get a good grip on the filament, a 7 to 1 gear ratio for some extreme filament pushing power, a small quiet cooling fan, and mounting holes pretty much all the way around the body of it for a lot of flexibility in how you attach it to your printer. And it gets you into the E3D Revo ecosystem with a variety of hot ends and quick change nozzles that are actually the nozzle and heat brake combined into a single component. They're precision engineered so that when you swap nozzles, the tip of the nozzle is always the same distance from the extruder body, which means you don't have to adjust your bed leveling or your Z offset. They've got brass nozzles, high flow nozzles, hardened wear resistant obsidian nozzles and belt printer nozzles. And those nozzles are available in a variety of orifice diameters. You can swap a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for a 0.8 millimeter nozzle to print big things more quickly or swap in a 0.25 millimeter nozzle for better detail on small prints. And that swap only takes about a minute. You just unscrew the old one and screw in the new one. One of the best things about Revo is that unlike regular nozzles, you do the nozzle changes cold. So there's no chance of burning yourself. E3D also has more than half a dozen hot ends. If you own multiple printers, they probably have one to fit them. And that Revo heater core, the tiny cylindrical heater and thermistor combo, lets you print at temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius if your firmware lets you go that high. On BQ's side of the house, they've made some improvements to the H2 design while keeping the same form factor. They've added some additional mounting holes on the front of the H2, so you have more options for mounting things like fans or bed probes. And the gearing seems a bit quieter, at least to me. It still clicks a little on retractions, though. You can wiggle that big gear just a little bit, so I think what's happening is that when the extruder stepper motor changes directions, the gear teeth click against each other, and it causes that noise. So, on this new one, BQ has added a tension adjustment, so you can control how tightly the filament drive gears grab the filament. And the loading lever has been significantly improved. Previously, it was just a spring-loaded lever, and it was hard to hold it open while inserting filament. But the new one is more like a toggle switch. Flip it forward to the loading position to completely release tension on the drive gears so you can get the filament loaded. Then flip it back to grab the filament. Speaking of filament, since I have the spool mounted on the left front corner of the printer, I'm using a Bowden tube as a guide to get the filament from the left side down into the filament drive gears. If your printer has a top mounted spool, you won't need that. But using this guide tube means I generally need to pop the tube out of the fitting on the top of the H2 so I can get the filament pointed down into the part where things get hot and melty. I'm not going to go into detail on the installation because there are so many possible printers you could install this on. But I do want to mention that despite improvements in the product itself, the wiring included with the kit is still a bit on the short side so you may need to splice or extend those cables to reach the main board on your printer. You'll also need to search for and print a suitable mounting plate to adapt the H2 to your printer's X carriage, and you'll need to print an appropriate parts cooling fan duct. If your printer uses a compact 4010 blower like this for parts cooling, I recommend replacing it with a 5015 blower like this one. Look at the label on the existing fan so you can get the right voltage rating on the replacement. There's a link in the description to the mount and fan duct I'm using for this Ender 3 V2, 
and I found those on printables. The mount is from one design and the fan duct is from another, but there are a lot of them to choose from. At a minimum, I suggest printing them in PETG for heat resistance, particularly the fan duct since it's going to be close to the hot end. Now, I went all out and printed them in PACF, carbon fiber reinforced nylon, because I have that option available to me with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. So the high level view of the installation is that you print the new mount and fan duct, remove the existing extruder from your printer's X carriage, and install the new mount and the H2 Revo, and then get the wiring connected and verify basic operation. Is the thermistor reporting a reasonable temperature? Can the printer heat the nozzle? Is the extruder motor spinning in the right direction when it's pushing filament? With that confirmed, and after making any necessary adjustments, you should perform a PID tuning on the hot end so the printer can keep the printing temperature locked in where you set it. Then, neaten up the wiring and start printing. Speaking of printing, here are a few things that I printed with it. Here's an articulated axolotl from AK Inferno on printables. And before you axolotl questions, this is printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height with three walls and 15% infill in Protopasta Nebula Cotton Candy Pastel HDPLA at 220 degrees Celsius. It's got a great surface finish with minimal stringing and all the little linked segments move. It's a fun and flexible little model with a lot of personality. Next, here's my desktop trash can printed in spiral vase mode or vase mode if you're a fancy and or not in the US with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. This is at 0.2 millimeter layer height and it's printed in Protopasta Mango Medley HTPLA at 220 degrees Celsius. It came out great and it's quite strong. After swapping back to the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, this Caladragon model by McGuybeer was done at 0.2 millimeter layer height in printed solids Jesse Premium PLA in the purple ice color. It's got a beautiful surface finish and to me, it looks like grape flavored candy. Everything about this is pretty much perfect and I think it came out great. While I had the purple ice loaded, I also printed a stringing slash retraction test model that came out flawlessly. If you're interested in the retraction settings I'm using, I have it set to 0.4 millimeters of retraction, direct drive extruders don't need much retraction at all, at a very slow 10 millimeters per second and a de-retraction speed of 40 millimeters per second. This is a model I've been using for a long time. It was designed by Stefan Alberts and you can download it from Thingiverse. I figured it would be worth printing something in a flexible filament so I loaded up some Overture TPU and printed this. It's one of the tires for Fab 365's Vespa scooter, a $4 model that I printed and assembled. I sliced this one at 0.16 millimeter layer height for a little more detail on the tread and it came out great and it could be squished. And now that I've shown you a few of the things that I printed on it, let's go over what I like and don't like about the H2 with the Revo. On the BQ side, I like that the H2 is a lightweight, compact, direct drive extruder. I like the gear reduction for the extruder stepper motor, the dual filament drive gears, and the fact that the tension on those gears is now adjustable. And the filament loading lever acting like a toggle switch makes it easier than ever to get filament loaded or unloaded. I think it's cool that it can be mounted to nearly any FDM printer. I searched on printables for BQH2, and after a bit of scrolling, I had found mounting solutions for at least 30 different models of 3D printers before I stopped looking. And because it's a modular system, you can, more often than not, mix and match components to get exactly the combination that works best for you. And that's what I did. I found a mounting bracket I liked, and then I found a fan duct that I liked, and they're from two different designers. On the E3D Revo side of things, I appreciate the super fast and super safe nozzle changes. With the printer at room temperature, just unscrew the old nozzle and screw in a new one. It's literally that easy. And you don't have to re-level after you change out nozzles because they're all exactly the same length. And that means if you get a clog, you can very quickly get up and running again. It also means if you want to switch from a 0.4 to a 0.6 or 0.8 millimeter nozzle, or switch to a hardened nozzle for abrasive materials, 
you can do it in about a minute. And with the color-coded silicone socks, you can tell at a glance which size nozzle you've got installed. So that's about it for my likes, and now it's time for the dislikes. The mounting solutions generally result in the nozzle being about 10 millimeters further forward on the y-axis than the stock nozzle. So on some printers, this can cost you a little bit of your build volume in the y-axis. It also requires a fair amount of rewiring to get it installed. And while that's not super difficult to do, it can be a daunting task if you haven't done that sort of thing before. Also, the wiring included in the kit is still about 100 millimeters too short to properly install on an Ender 3 V2. I ran into that with the original BQH2, and I also ran into that with the E3D Revo Micro Kit. I think it would be a good idea to include slightly longer wiring in the kit so people have a better chance of success without having to splice wires together to get it installed. And the little manual that comes with the H2 doesn't really go into any detail at all about actually installing it. You kind of have to figure that out on your own. On the one hand, given the huge number of printers on which this could potentially be installed, I understand they don't necessarily have the resources to make 40 or 50 different installation guides. But on the other hand, some general guidance would be welcome. So to that end, I offer this advice. Select printable mounts and parts cooling fan mounts and then print and test fit them on the H2 body before you start taking things apart. Know how to crimp connectors or splice wires or have access to someone who does. You're probably going to need to extend the cable length. Now beyond that, it's mostly a matter of having a good idea of how to route cables on your printer and keep them out of the way of the moving parts. So that's it for what I don't like. It's about time to wrap things up. The BQ H2 V2S Revo retails between $125 and $135. Bucks. Now that puts it in roughly the same price range as other higher-end direct drive extruders. But with the BQ, you get the benefit of the Revo rapid change nozzles like I mentioned a minute ago. Now, those Revo nozzles are more expensive than your typical 10 nozzles for $10 bucks you'd find on Amazon, clocking in at about $20 each for the brass ones but they're so hassle-free compared to a typical nozzle replacement where you have to heat up the printer, unscrew the old nozzle, screw in the new nozzle, and make sure the nozzles tighten just right because when you don't get it right, you could end up with filament leaking out around the nozzle's threads and creating a huge mess. Been there, done that. A Revo nozzle comprises the entire filament path from the filament drive gears on the cold side all the way to the hot side of the hot end so it can't leak like that. And don't forget having to re-level the bed after a traditional nozzle replacement. The Revo lets you skip that. If you like to tinker a lot with your printer, the value proposition may be different for you. But I think for me, the benefits of the Revo, like being able to swap nozzles in a minute and not having to re-level the bed, is worth the cost of admission. I just wish the wires were longer. Well, thanks again to E3D for sending the product over free of charge. And a big thanks to everyone who supports the channel whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. If you liked this one, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool.